so in section four, I'm going to skip chapter three right for now, then come back to it right after this. But in section four, we talk about capacitors in series and in parallel. So this this follows on what we were talking about with capacitor circuits, except with, it's with more than one capacitor. So let's start off with capacitors in parallel. So we have a power supply, and by parallel, me we mean that we connect all these uh, capacitors here, and we connect the pass capacitors in such a way that they're they're all connected so that one end of them is all connected together and the other end is all connected together. So that means that when we close the switch, we have some voltage here, we close the switch, then this becomes a wire. And so these are all positive here and these are all negative here. And so to be in parallel, don't worry about what parallel means, you know, in, in layman's term, but in, in electronics, parallel means that they all have the exact same voltage on them because the tops of them are all connected together, the bottoms are all connected together. So that's parallel. Um, so the uh, what we have here is that when we close the switch, some charge had to flow here in order for it to be positive on the top and negative on the bottom. And so we look at this and we say, well, okay, so we have some Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. This is going to be my capacitor 1, capacitor 2, capacitor 3, and capacitor 4. They do not have to all be identical. What has to be identical is that one end of them is all connected and the other end is all connected together. That, that makes it parallel. So because the wire across the top is a conductor and the wire across the bottom is a conductor, you have the same electric potential everywhere at the top and the same electric potential everywhere at the bottom. So that means that V1 equals V2 equals V3 equals V4, and that's equal to the total, that is equal to V0, which is the power supply voltage we applied. And so th there we have this, this, this idea. Okay, now, charge. Well, we know that for a capacitor, the charge on the capacitor is going to be equal to C times V. Okay, so that means we have uh, the voltage is all the same. So Q1 is going to be equal to C1 times V0. Q2 is C2 times V0. Q3 is C3 times V0. And Q4 is C4 times V0. Okay. Now we have to have conservation of charge. So we have some total charge that comes out of the power supply. And some of it goes down to 1. Some here, some there, some there. So some of the charge gets deposited on each one. So we can say that the total charge is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q3. Q4. Okay. Well, we could have had a power supply and just one capacitor over here. Some capacitor right here, we'll call it C equivalent, and, and when I close the switch, then charge goes over here, and I could actually pick C equivalent to be whatever it needs to be so that the charge here is Q, Q total. So that's going to be C equivalent times V naught. Okay, so I can pick the, the, that C equivalent to be whatever it is. So in other words, I could effectively replace those four capacitors that I had before. I could have replaced those four capacitors with 
one capacitor that does the same thing uh, 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 effectively as those four capacitors. And so the question is, how big would that capacitor be? Well, we look at it and we say, well, Q total is going to be the equivalent capacitance times V naught. We know that Q total is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q4. And so therefore, uh, we know that each Q is going to be C times V. So the equivalent capacitance V naught equals C1 V naught plus C2 V naught plus C3 V naught plus C4 V naught. But we just cancel all the V naughts and what we come up with is the equivalent capacitance is going to be C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4. Now your book does the same derivation except the book does it for three capacitors. And you find that for three capacitors, then the equivalent capacitance is C1 plus C2 plus C3. Okay. And so we look at that and we see there's a very clear pattern here. For capacitors that are in parallel, the total or the equivalent capacitance is going to be the sum of all the individual capacitors. So go from I equals 1 up to the total number of capacitors. So this is how you do capacitors in parallel. So the next question would be, what about capacitors in series? So for a capacitor in series system, we have, uh, we have C1, C2, C3, C4. Now, what makes this series? How does series differ from parallel? Well, what happens is when you close the switch, current flows and flows here. Well, that means you get charged up here. We get negative charge here. Okay, but we know if we got positive charge up here, that's going to that's going to attract negative charge, repel positive charge, and so that's going to do the same thing here. That's going to do the same thing here, and so that means you get the same charge on each one. So Q1 equals Q2 equals Q3 equals Q4. Okay. But we know there's a voltage here, V1. We know there's a voltage here, V2. We know there's a voltage here, V3. We know there's a voltage there, V4. Okay. So we look at that and we say, okay, so we know that the charges are the same. What about voltages? Well, they don't have to be the same. Okay. The voltages don't have to be the same. So we know from our, our equations before uh, uh, that voltage is going to be Q over C. Okay. So if the C's are different, the voltages are going to be different if the charge is the same. Well, what we do know is voltage is a measure of electrical potential energy per charge. We call it electrical potential. So if I were to measure the difference in electrical potential energy top and bottom, that total voltage is going to be V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4. So that's my total voltage. Okay. They're not all the same voltage. That's a mistake students make is they think we connect up to like a 9-volt battery, everything is 9 volts on it. Well, no. If they're in series, the voltages add, but the electric current and the charge is the same. So that's what makes it series versus parallel. We'll get back to that towards the end. Okay. So now what we have is that this is some V naught. So I have some V naught right here, and I connect it up, close the switch here, and I've got these different capacitors here, C1, C2, C3, C4, and I want to replace those capacitors with one equivalent capacitor to see what does that do. So rather than four capacitors, I want to make, you know, a, a manufacturing change. It might be simpler and cheaper uh, to manufacture my circuit with one equivalent capacitor. So now if they are in parallel, I know the equivalent capacitance is the sum of the capacitors. 
But what about now? Well, we know that voltage is C over, sorry, voltage is Q over C. So I know that the total voltage is going to be V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4. I also know that that total voltage is going to equal the voltage of the power supply. So V in all equals V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4. Well, in the case of the equivalent capacitor, that means this is going to be a charge over the equivalent capacitance. So uh, we follow this through Q over C1 plus Q over C2 plus Q over C3 plus Q over C4. The Qs all cancel. And so 1 divided by CEQ equals 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3 plus 1 over C4. Or in other words, I could say 1 over CEQ uh, uh, is going to be equal to the sum, N equals 1 up to the number here, of 1 over C sub I. Okay. If I want to find CEQ, obviously that's going to be that sum... the negative one. Okay, so now we have an equation here that does this. Now again, your book does it for three capacitors, and so, so I did it for four to show you just how you extend this concept right here. And so this, this gives you the series in parallel. So let's refresh. Series. What makes it in series? Well, in series, we have a bunch of devices here, okay? It doesn't matter how many, but in series, current comes in and out. So conservation of charge means everything has the same charge, but the voltages add. So, it, so I is the same, Q is the same, And the voltages add. Okay. Voltages are not all the same. Unless the capacitors are all the same. Parallel. So, in parallel, what happens is the charge, the current, and the charge go in. And it splits, and some goes to each one. So we have Q1, Q2, Q3. And then it all comes back together here. So in this case, it's all the same voltage. So that means the voltage is the same for all of them. Okay, but that means the Qs and the Is add. Okay, they do not necessarily have to all be the same, but they have to all add to one another. Okay, so the Q total is the sum of the Qs. Okay, and likewise, if we had resistors or something that had current in it, then the I total would be sum of the individual I's. All right, so that's the difference between series and parallel in terms of capacitors. Once again, for series... Or parallel, you know now conceptually what makes them different. So what do you need to remember? You need to know that the equivalent capacitance is the sum of the individual C's. The equivalent capacitance here is going to be the sum of the individual 1 over the individual capacitors to the minus 1. Okay, or another way of writing that is 1 over CEQ equals the sum of the individuals. So that's another way of writing that same thing. That's how it's written in the book.